Hi, welcome to my talk. Um, first, let me thank the organizers for inviting me to speak here. I'm really excited for the opportunity to share my work with you. So today I'm going to be talking about the Crane Yata environment as an extended TQFT. The Crane Yata environment is uh, an environment of four manifolds that naturally extends to a TQFT. Uh, it's defined in a manner similar to Terai Vero as a state sum, and since that extends to codimension 2, we expect Craniata to do the same as well. In particular, Craniata assigns to a surface uh, a category. It's known that for a closed form manifold, the Craniata gives you the signature and the Euler characteristic, and um, it's also expected that the Rechtian Turaev TQFT is a boundary theory of Crane Yatta. So, here's a brief outline of my talk today. So, I'll first briefly describe Crane Yatta as a state sum and as, uh, as an extended TQFT, and I'll give an alternative definition in terms of schemes. I will discuss uh, how the signature arises, and since we are dealing with uh, four manifolds with corners, we have to take into account the non-additivity of signature. Uh, when you when you glue four manifolds along a three uh, along a three manifold with boundary, the signature doesn't quite add, and that's a it's an error term. Um, I will discuss the Rechtstein derive TQFT as a boundary theory of Craniata, and finally I'll say something about skin categories um, and some properties of it. Uh, so first, let me go through some uh, background and preliminaries uh, and some conventions. So. In terms of topology, um, technically I'll be using piecewise linear topology, but since we're in low dimensions, um, we can assume that they're, they're essentially equivalent, so we can assume that uh, we're dealing with smooth smooth manifolds. Of course, we'll be dealing with cobordisms, uh, denoted like this. So this is a cobordism from m to m prime. Uh, they go cobordisms go downward, but also be talking about cobordisms between uh, manifolds with boundaries. So uh, usually they're phrased in terms of relative cobordisms where the boundary has uh, the identity cobordism. But uh, I find I, I'm going to be using a slightly different notion of coordinate cobordism. Uh, they're essentially relative cobordisms where you pinch this vertical. Uh, boundary to down, downwards to just one copy, and like that. Uh, another way to think of it is just to take this one copy of it as a as a corner. So then this part here would serve as a collar a collar neighborhood of it. So we denote the corner cobordism over N to be uh, as such. And as a matter of convention, in this talk, uh, W, M, and N would stand for 4, 3, 2 manifolds. Uh, the, the handle decomposition is a decomposition of a cobordism into a sequence of elementary cobordisms. Ele elementary cobordism is one that is the simplest one beside identity cobordism, where you attach a, a ball. In a specific manner. Um, so, for example, this is a one handle. Uh, <coughs> so, it's known that any coordinate cobordism admits a handle decomposition, and in fact, any two handle decomposition related by, by just these three types of loops. So, you can swap the order of uh, certain cobordism, some, some of these elementary cobordisms, you can create a pair. A cancelling pair. So, for example, 
you can add a zero handle and cancel off with a one handle and then of course you can perform handle slides so you can slide this like that across across another handle to end up like that for in terms of algebra we'll be using pre-modular categories as input so usually denoted by A and I'll be denoting morphisms by string diagrams uh, I'll denote uh, I'll draw morphisms from top to bottom and uh, the braiding is given by uh, so-called negative twist a, ne a negative crossing uh, in particular for the twist um, the twist is given by a left hand twist so of course premodular categories have uh, have tensor products have duals uh, has a pseudo structure which I suppress and it should be sp spherical and then of course braiding and being compatible and all that uh, I, s I assume premodular categories to be semi-simple over an algebraically closed field of characteristic zero and they should have finally many simple objects uh, for each simple ob each uh, I'll, I'll choose a representative for each equivalent class of simple object and uh, I'll denote by di the dimension categorical dimension of that simple object uh, the invariant subspace of some tensor product will be denoted like this and so for if I do all the objects and reverse the order this naturally is dual to this space but via this evaluation pairing when I see a pair of Greek letters uh, these, these graphs can be in different parts of the graph they don't even have this so I think of this tensor product here so uh, if I see a pair of uh, repeating Greek letters that's actually going to denote a sum over dual bases uh, this dual bases for for this invariant subspace uh, in particular uh, this is often used as such so you take a bunch of strands you can bunch them together and uh, that can rewrite it like this so essentially this alpha here serves to project onto every uh, component, every simple component and then this alpha serves to include it back into this tensor product um, since this appears a lot, it's known as the regular coloring so I, I denote it by omega or sometimes it's a dash line uh, so the most important lemmas uh, would, that I use would be the here's the sliding lemma so you can slide a strand through a loop labeled by regular coloring and uh, the, the killing lemma so when A is modular uh, and if you have a loop going around a simple object uh, that that's always that's zero if the simple object is not one. Uh, in particular, if you have this uh, loop around a bunch of strands, uh, we apply the previous this thing uh, to show that uh, you can sort of break it around here, so you can cut. Essentially, you can cut the graph like that. And then, of course, we'll be using a uh, notion of A-colored ribbon graphs uh, and, and schemes. Uh, so, of course, a ribbon graph here it will be the edges will be colored um, for both directions, so that um, the label for one direction is dual to the other. Um, and then vertices are colored by because invariant subspace of these objects. <coughs> and of course, this theorem by uh, Ernestine and Tuberf about ribbon graphs that they have well-defined evaluations. Uh, 
be using a slightly different form of this. So if you have a ball and the graph touches the ball, needs to ball along some some objects v1 to vk, then there's a well-defined evaluation uh, in this uh, invariant subspace. Uh, the way you choose to write this in this order is given by some sort of choice of a graph that's in some sense as simple as possible. Uh, and then of course schemes would be the space of linear combinations um, of graphs, modulo so-called null graphs. So null graphs are linear combinations that agree outside the ball and inside the ball evaluate to zero. <coughs> okay, so uh, let's uh, quickly define uh, craniosis for triangulation. Uh, so in my work, I use a slightly more general notion of piecewise linear CW complexes. Uh, uh, but uh, for the purposes of this talk, I'll just be thinking about triangulation. So uh, simple labeling is an assignment of an object to e a simple object to each oriented two cell. The opposite orientation gives two objects. Uh, for each oriented three cell, define a so-called local state space. Um, that's the invariant subspace of the tensor product in the boundary of the labels in the boundary. And if you uh, if you take the opposite orientation, the the objects in the boundary also become dual. So uh, that's a natural pairing that applies the the um, evaluation pairing. For uh, oriented triangular three manifold, we define this pre-state space to be this. This the tensor product over these three cells. For or oriented four cell, uh, we define this local invariant to be a vector in the tensor product of local state spaces in the boundary. Such a vector, any such vector would define a map like this. Um, so if we choose some some three cell on the boundary to be sort of out output and some the rest to be sort of incoming boundary uh, three cells then a vector in here would define a map from transfer these local state spaces to the output local state spaces and we define this uh, uh, this vector to be the one that gives the evaluation uh, of the graph. If you take the graph here, a graph, uh, a vector here, a vector here. Uh, think of it as a graph uh, in in this manner. Then you can put the graph together and evaluate it, and that gives you the vector in here. So uh, for triangle four manifold, uh, we take these local invariants, tensor them together. Uh, the, and that lives in this giant vector space. So it's the it's local state spaces tensor over all interior all three cells. For each interior three cells, it appear um, twice, once for each opposite orientation. This is the boundary of exactly two four cells. Uh, whereas for boundary three cells, it appears exactly once. Uh, so we take this tensor product and then we apply evaluation pairing to this part and that gives us that leaves us with some vector in this tensor product which defines this. Uh, finally we add up all these ZWLs for all labelings uh, with certain um, coefficients. And of course, uh, this pre-state space is too big. That depends on triangulation. So, like in two area zero, uh, we take a projection, uh, and of course, these projections are naturally identified. So, this would be the state space associated to a three manifold. And uh, I guess the claim is that uh, this this is well defined um, and agrees with the. Um, 
the original definition by by Crane Yata and then by Crane Kaufman Yata. Uh, this is the details of this is laid out in my thesis, which I, I plan to put up on archive soon. So in order to extend to four manifolds with corners, so it's considered a surface in the boundary of the four manifold. Um, really, this is a collection of two cells would do. But uh, so let's take so for a four manifold with corner, we define its Kronecker invariant to be essentially the same sum, but the coefficients are slightly different. So here. Uh, we sort of exclude n from consideration. So originally, there's no. We take this product over all all two cells, uh, whereas here we exclude two cells n. Likewise over here. So it's essentially the same, um, and it's not hard to show that this is also invariant with respect to uh, charge of triangulation. So the the reason for choosing these coefficients like this is so that uh, Corner cobaltisms compose and that so that the craniator respects uh, composition. So here we have W is corner cobaltism from M to M prime, corner over W uh, over N, likewise here M pr W prime, um, and they compose just by gluing the four manifolds along this M prime, which is the three manifold with boundary. And this equation says that. Uh, Craniator respect composition. Uh, here's so a slightly more general form of uh, composition, which is like we can include. Uh, so here, phi combined with phi prime is a state like that. So we can apply this corner cobordism to get a state here, or we can first apply this corner cobaltism to get a state here. That's this part here. And then combine that with phi prime and get a state up here. Just applying W prime. And, and saying that this is these are the same. So now to the uh polymeration two part, so surfaces, we define category of boundary values as such. So <coughs> first we have um, the objects are a triangulation of the surface together with a simple labeling and we take the formal direct sum for these. So these are the objects and then the space of morphisms for such object uh, would be this, uh, this state space with the appropriate boundary conditions uh, plus extended to direct sums. <coughs> and finally the category boundary values should be we take the Karubi closure like that. The the idempotent completion of that category. Um, so let let me now uh, define Kraniata in terms of schemes. So as we said before, the schemes are a form a linear combination of a color graphs, uh, modulo so called null graphs, where null graph is um, such a sum where these gamma i's and gamma j's agree outside of some ball D, and uh, inside the ball they evaluate, uh, evaluate to zero. So uh, in some colored graph gamma would define a boundary value on the boundary of M. So here boundary value means uh, the boundary value for in terms of schemes be uh, just a collection of arcs or points, arc points, and a label for each directed arc. And so we, we take the scheme space for Manifold, three manifold M with a boundary condition, a boundary value to be just those schemes that have that boundary value. For surface N, uh, the category of boundary value for the scheme category is 
has objects these boundary values and then space of morphisms is um, again the the state space but with those boundary conditions and then of course we, and then again we take the through the envelope uh, claim that this this is the same as this is equivalent. it's not hard to see that this is actually equivalent to the original the, the first definition uh, well I'll say a little bit more later so uh, and in, in each surface uh, there's a natural object the empty configuration where there's no mark points uh, this is equivalent to any um, object where all the labels if all the labels are unit objects these are, these are equivalent these are isomorphic And if we put empty in configuration on a boundary, that's a natural scheme given by the empty graph. Or you could say that the empty graph leaves boundary value empty configuration. So uh, next was we can define um, the scheme version of Kriniata for four manifolds by using a handle decomposition of the cobordism for, for this four manifold. So we take the handle, so we just have to define for uh, elementary cobordisms what what this means. And then the claim is that this definition given is invariant under handle moves. So that the overall cobordism is assigned uh, uh, an invariant that's independent of the handle decomposition. So uh, here if we define it case by case depending on the index. So for index 0 it just creates an S3 component so I just put the empty scheme there and this here sits on constant to make things work. Uh, oh, so I think I didn't mention that this constant here is the dimension of the category A. Uh, for k equals to 4, we are killing off an S3 component. Um, so what we do is like we take this, uh, we just evaluate the graph that's inside that component, and leave leave the rest. For k equals to 1, we're adding a one handle, so that's the attaching region is a pair of balls, so we can avoid we can isotope the scheme to avoid that, and we can treat it as a as a scheme in the resulting manifold, uh, resulting three manifold, um, and we just plot a constant in front. Uh, this is well defined because so any way you push it off, they're all isotopic themselves. Uh, the most interesting cases are k equals 2 and 3. So for k equals 2, the attaching region is a solid torus. So the again we push we can push off scheme off of the attaching region in two ways so like this or like that okay um, and then we add a component uh, which is a meridian around the attaching uh, region and we label it by omega of the regular coloring and by the sliding lemma uh, these are equal because um, yeah you can slide this to to get to that. Um, so yeah, so the result of applying, ad adding a two-handle as a cobordism sends gamma graph to, we, we just add this uh, attaching, this, this meridian. Uh, for a three-handle, uh, we think of it as removing a one-handle. Um, so uh, if we have one handle with stuff going in and then stuff coming out like that. Uh, you know, stuff goes in and goes through the one handle and comes out. Uh, what we first do is we bunch it up into just one strand labeled with simple objects. Then uh, the operation is defined so that we just kill off all the non-unit objects, non-unit simple objects. Um, no, but you can think of it as adding 
If if a is modular, you can think of it as adding a uh, just a uh, one loop around that this strand, and then uh, by the killing lemma, this this would do the same would do the same work. Um, but in general pre-modular case, we can't really do that. That's actually different. Uh, in fact, I think that's that's probably the most. This is probably where things break down for um, diff the real difference between modular and pre-modular that is actually here. Uh, and I, I proved in, uh, in my thesis that these are these are actually equivalent. Um, so for three manifolds, uh, when you have a state, let's say a tensor product of local states, um, that gives you a graph. Uh, and just if by for just forgetting the triangulation, you can assume uh, and claim that this map essentially this map would be the the right map to to say that uh, for three manifold these are isomorphic. Um, and it's quite easy to see like that that for two manifolds the category boundary values are the same. Because you just essentially when you forget um, when you take a a boundary value like this and you forget the triangulation essentially you get a bunch of mark points uh, with uh, with labels. Um, here I think I'm, I'm, I'm suppressing some sort of the choice of mark point in the triangulation but it's not it's not hard to see why this works. For four manifold uh, all you need to do is to check that these agree these definitions agree on handles so this is where the language of coordinate cobordisms are useful. So a handle is, you think of it as a coordinate cobordism. Um, and then with appropriate boundary conditions, you say that this uh, for the original, the triangula triangulation definition and the screen definition are the same. So most of the proof is really just a bunch of uh, checking the computations, so I won't go into any of that. Uh, I'll, instead, I'll discuss some examples. So, so let's say we take a frame link in S3 and we attach to the four ball um, a two handle to each component of the frame link. So in terms of the boundary, of course, this is just performing surgery along L. And so we can think of WL as uh, cobordism, right? So the first, the four ball is the cobordism from empty to uh, the three sphere, and each attaching of two handles is a uh, cobordism to the uh, manifold. But we should uh, we should think of it here um, the other way around. So we take the dual handle decomposition. So now we have a cobordism from ML with the opposite orientation. Uh, to S3 again with the opposite orientation. Finally, we add, we cap it off with a four handle. So here it's depicted like this. Um, so note that the meridian of the attaching region of the dual handle is exactly the attaching sphere of the original two handle. So here, um, here we're attaching. Uh, this is the attaching region L, right? It's the attaching sphere for the do the two handle, but in from the perspective of adding this way, so if we're adding this way, think of this this two handle as a, the dual two handle. Um, that's exactly the meridian of that two handle, of the dual two handle. So in other words, by the the calculus defined here. Um, the, this cobordism would would add exactly uh, would exactly give you L with the regular coloring. Okay, so this is yeah, yeah. but note that uh, the L here is actually drawn in the opposite orientation uh, three sphere. So uh, we have to flip it apply a mirror image and then finally we can cap it off on that. 
So this is essentially the Rectum to Rise invariant for the 3 manifold. Uh, there, that's this extra normalization to make it uh, independent of the 4 manifold. So not here, like there's a mirror image uh, here, but usually there isn't. But this is this is just an artifact of our choice of con conventions. Because we're drawing things from top to bottom, twist is the left hand twist, whereas usually morphisms drawn from bottom to top and then twist is right hand. So uh, if we normalize this empty skin with this with this factor in front, that's independent of the four manifold. This depends on the three manifold itself. Um, then we essentially we once again recover the signature formula and also the other characteristic. So um, that leads us to define this for a general three manifold. So note like here it's opposite orientation. So this is an empty skin. This is a skin in M. Um, I claim later I'll just say how. Uh, but I claim that the skin space when A is modular for closed three manifold is one dimensional. So essentially, this says that this picks out an element and we can identify. Um, uh, is a way to identify it with with the scalar. So this says that uh, the invariant of uh, four manifold with boundary is exactly that. We, we, Um, the way it's proved is essentially uses the previous example. Um, essentially, all the the main idea is from the previous example. Uh, the key generalization to any four manifold is the following. So it's it's the fact that you can trade one handle for two handles. Um, so uh, and that's so this is using a sort of uh, you know, output loops um, dotted circle notation for one handle, and you can trade it for a two handle without changing the three manifold. Um, as we mentioned, like by doing this, you can uh, kill off uh, stuff that goes through it. Okay, so we get this. So, so this is in terms of screen editor, this is essentially the same as doing one handle but with an extra factor. This uses the killing lemma, and this is where I think uh, modularity is most. Most key. Um. Okay, so um, when you compose cobordisms, uh, well, the craniata as a map should also compose, and that reflects additivity of signature and other characteristic. Okay. So, additivity of signature is given by null cost additivity. Um, and all the characteristics add, but you know you have to subtract this off, which is a three manifold, so other characteristic is zero. So in 1969, uh, Wall showed that when you glue four manifolds along a three manifold with boundary, so like this, so if you have one four manifold, another four manifold, and they glue along a three manifold with boundary, uh, the signatures don't quite add. So sum of signatures but then you have to subtract an error term. Uh, and this error term is computed uh, I won't say exactly how you do it but uh, here V is the first homology group of the surface. Um, LJs are the kernels of the for the inclusion of N into uh, the, the induced map from uh, from the inclusion of n into each of these m mi's. So here w is a corner covariance from m1 to m2 over n, and then likewise m prime m2 to m3. So each of these three manifolds defines a subspace um, in this space by from from this inclusion. Uh, and these are known to be the Lagrangian subspaces of V as a symplectic characteristic, where the symplectic structure is the intersection invariant. Uh, this, this, the way you compute this is then is they associate uh, an auxiliary vector space V bar 
built from these things, um, and and some sort of uh, some symmetric pairing that is also built out of the uh, symmetric pairing here, uh, the symplectic pairing here, and this has a signature, and that signature is exactly this. Um, so I would like to incorporate this fact. So uh, here it seems like this this error term appears out of the confluence of these these three manifolds. But I would like to sort of localize it to each. I split. I want to split this up to to a term here and a term here so that things add up nicely. So here this is how we do it. Um, Let's see the full multi curve. So it's a collection of G curves on a genus G surface such that if you perform surgery, um, that gives that results in S2. So, I mean, any multi curves like this, full multi curves like this, uh, under some, some homeomorphism always looks like that. Now, uh, if you take a uh, these curves, you can you, you thicken the surface, and then you put these loops in the middle of the surface. Uh, that and then you color them appropriately. So you color them by the regular coloring that defines the morphism from empty to empty, uh, and then be normalized by this constant. And this gives us a projection, and uh, and hence defines an an object in uh, Kirby envelope. So, and then uh, for that for for that three for three manifold with boundary M, uh, we define M sub C to be uh, we close up that boundary by attaching a handle body in a manner that kills off the C. So in particular, this, this is how you draw the handle body. Uh, so it kills off. These are non-homotopic in the in the body. So uh, we define this. Uh, to be a normalization of the empty scheme. Here, here uh, technically, well, it doesn't quite look like an empty scheme because you have these, this morphism here, these graphs. But um, as a map, in as a scheme in with this boundary condition, this is actually given by the empty scheme. <coughs> uh, and of course, we normalize uh, like this, and I claim that again. Um, the states this this I claim actually this is the simple object and a simple object in this category and so this is actually one dimensional and this choice of uh, a scheme uh, defines an uh, identification with scalars and so this statement here is that the invariant associated to the craniator for manifold as a corner cobordism is given by this. Uh, so it's again it's a signature but with this error term here and then it's always characteristic with this error term. Uh, this error term here is like uh, we sort of treat it as though we have attached a uh, handle body to it. So if the corner cobordism like this W so it has M1, M2 right? so it's a corner cobordism like that and so we sort of think of it with this part here as contributing with it, so we have to, we've attached the three manifold like that the handle body uh, and I claim that you know this this works out nicely so that um, the composition well composition we've already known that it works it is respected uh, it respe uh, respects composition of corner cobordism but you can see that this purely in terms of this formula, it also works. Okay, so now let me say a thing or two about uh, relation to or thing to arrive GKRT. So for a handle body, it's not hard to see that it's actually uh, the scheme space is just like this. So for example, for genus one, a solid torus with let's say boundary condition like that, this one mark point. Then you can always massage the scheme to look something like that, and it just boils down to what you label this this vertex by. Uh, 
and you have to sum over all possible simple labelings. Yeah. So then this is also known to be how you define uh, the rest of the ice state space for the boundary of that. Uh, that so for uh, for the close GNST surface. So uh, essentially here we'll make the onsets that uh, we'll make the sum the so the operational definitions that for uh, for a surface we choose some hand body with that boundary and we say that the rest taken to our state space is exactly this clean space. Um, and then I'll, I want to show that this is the same as uh, this this extends to a theory that's the same as for skin to rise. So for three manifold what how do we define the um, we're changing to arrive, so um, to first like note that um, we can define a pairing for the scheme spaces. So for a scheme in a manifold with boundary M, and then a scheme in the opposite orientation, we can glue them together along that boundary. If there's no boundary, of course, we can just consider them as separate. So we glue them along the, the common boundary M. And then we apply apply this coercion. So we have C free prime and glue, and then we evaluate. Um, I, uh, so this is this this and this format for here is just M cross I. But you stretch you pull this out the fan, uh, so that it looks like that. And I claim that this pairing is non-degenerate. Uh, this Follows quite easily when you. This is quite clear from the perspective of triangulations, but uh, so then because the equivalent, the skin definition is equivalent to the triangulation definition, so that's that also shows that this is non degenerate. Uh, in particular, if you take for for our operational definition of state space for surface, um, the opposite orientation surface would be naturally dual with the with this state space. Uh, the scheme pairing allows us to sort of translate between corner cobordisms with just regular cobordisms like this, right? So if you have a state here in M, you can apply W to get a state and then perform the pairing against some P prime in M prime, in M, yeah, in M prime. M prime bar actually. Uh, or you can just glue it together and then apply W. So here, so here W joined with this part here. This is uh, it's still W. This is actually just W. So the picture is clear, but um, yeah. So essentially, the skin pairing translates between these two perspectives. Uh, so for three manifold with a graph inside it, you can sort of draw draw. Think of it this way, like sort of vertical. Uh, vertical here. Um, so then, for a state in here, the resting to our state space, um, as we said, like the operational definition, a state would be just be a state that would just be a scheme in this handle body. So um, we can combine that state phi with that graph gamma, uh, then apply choose some four manifold. Uh, with this boundary, and uh, this gives us a state out here. Uh, this, of course, so this depends on the choice of this four manifold, but um, that choice is eliminated, like it makes made made redundant by uh, by this factor. And I claim that this map is actually the same as the. Original Vertican drive definition. Um, it's not hard to see actually because it's actually an extension of the the example I discussed with uh, WL. Um, and yeah, I, I won't go into the details of the proof here. And the skin pairing gives you a notion of how to glue things.
Uh, the gluing axiom here is actually more natural state than in original, but you know, I need details here. So uh, finally, uh, let me discuss some uh, properties of skin categories. So uh, skin categories, I, we show that it, they satisfy excision. So this is actually anticipated by uh, Walker, Kevin Walker, and it's also proved in Julia Cook's work. Uh, where we came to this uh, independently and we used this, this more uh, like concrete language of uh, we we yeah. Right. <coughs> so uh, first, the, if you have a surface with two colored boundaries uh, that are the same, uh, this makes it a bimodular category over for these these categories. These these categories uh, naturally are monoidal because you can. For example, here this is the circle, and this is just including an annulus, um, two copies of the annulus to into itself, and that defines uh, sort of product structure. So, um, so we have a, a bimodular structure over uh, for for this category, and I claim that. The excision property here is stated as follows. So when you glue up the we glue this to this, uh, the skin category associated to the glued up surface is the center of the original surface. So we here we just give a sketch of the proof. So um, this remind you what definition of this uh, center is. So it's just just like the Dreamfeld center is just a set of uh, pairs of an object with a half reading. Uh, so see for example Gramsci and others work. And then we also have an auxiliary definition uh, well uh, it was defined essentially in Peter Kovac's work and, and others. Uh, it's called the horizontal trace. And so the objects are the same, but there are more morphisms here. So morphisms are, we allow, we added, uh, so morphisms are from A acting on X to Y acting on by A. And then, so for example, here, um, Here the equivalence equation is T plus A. Um, right, yeah. So this is uh, this should be considered both. morphism is in here and then this morphism is in here for for B instead of A and they if you can present it as you know, composing F with this thing you can pull if you pull the F over around here it should be the same we, we should identify these two so it's known as a horizontal trace um, so and this this construction can define as a, some sort of co n um, and the relation between these two is that one is the curve decoding of the other. Uh, uh, one useful lemma here is to that this this morphism space is actually not that big. So when C is pivotal multifusion, we just have to take the just have to consider simple objects. And the sketch of how so so knowing this, uh, we just have to deal with the horizontal trace and 
the non the 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 version of the skin categories that before Kirby Korea. Um, so step by step, so you have if the, you can you can when you include n into n prime, the glued up so when you glue up the manifold, there's an inclusion. Uh, it's quite clear that this is essentially subjective. Uh, and then we show that it extends to the horizontal trace. So when you <coughs> sort of artificial, artificially add uh, object A here versus object A here, um, you get a morphism like in here is, is given by such a graph. And you get a graph in the glued up surface across I by when you pinch this down, so make this like that, make it vertical. And then glue up, so and make this part vertical also, so like this. And of course, you glue this to that. That's what you get. You get a graph in time prime. Okay. Um, so activity is not hard to show in terms of for the morphism space. Injectivity is also not too hard. Uh, so essentially, gluing gives more space, gives allows us to draw more graphs, and this, the graphs that go around like that um, correspond to half gradients in the center. That's essentially the, the main, main, the key idea, key point. Uh, let me discuss one example of this uh, by using this. So, uh, it, from, from the discussion above, you can actually see quite clearly like the annulus, right? You, Glue by obtained by gluing up two sides of a say square. So then that naturally says that uh, the skin category is equivalent to the Drinfeld center. But on the Drinfeld center, you have your usual tensor product. Over here, you have a tensor product given by so-called stacking, as I mentioned. So, so if you take this boundary and glue it to the inside boundary, then you get uh, Get this new graph. Right? You combine graphs here. To here. Uh, so we call that the stacking product, um, and but that's not equivalent to the stack the the usual tensor product here. Uh, this uh, so in in my previous work, um, I define what that tensor product should be, the one that transfers over from the stacking product. This incidentally. Uh, Wasserman, Thomas Wasserman also found a similar definition, but he dealt mostly with uh, symmetric tensor categories. Um, so, uh, for for two objects X with half rating and Y with half rating, we define this object as a projection. So X tensor Y is a subobject of X tensor Y. This may be zero. Um, and then we put a half rating on it. So here, this half rating is the same as this half rating because of the projection. And uh, the unit object is given by this direct sum, uh, the sum, and with this half rating. And as I mentioned, the claim is that these are this reduced tensor product is exactly the stacking tensor product here. Uh, I wouldn't go through how we prove this. Um, essentially what, what goes on is that we have these two strands here going around, right? So again we can use we can bunch it up so that we only have one strand going around with simple labelings. And so that sort of corresponds to, to this picture here. So in for modular, when A is modular, we know that the Greenfield center is as an abelian carrier, in fact, so a graded tensor category, equivalent to A tensor A with the opposite ring. And here, if we translate the tensor product, the reduced tensor product to this category, it's given quite simply as follows. So um, essentially, uh, this is 
this is equivalent to the category of vector value uh, matrices. Um, equivalent as abelian categories, but as if they're not equivalent as pivotal pivotal categories. Um, essentially, the, the dimensions set them apart. Uh, and then in when A is symmetric, in particular when it's the category representation for a sample group, it's known that Grimm's law center is the category of G equivalent bundles over G with the conjugation action. Then this reduced tensor product translates to a fiber-wise tensor product as opposed to the convolutional, the convolution tensor product for the usual tensor product. Uh, so this is all you can find this in my, uh, my work here. And finally, let me end by just describing other the results for other surface. I don't have time to go into the details. So for the disk, obviously, you know, we associate the original category. For a sphere, um, th we would uh, assign, we actually get the Muger center of A. For the uh, for the for the punctured torus, is equivalent to something I call the uh, elliptic Kronfeld center, and this is again in defined in my previous work. So it's a trip. The objects are triple of it, it's an object with two half gradings. Half gradings commute in certain ways. Uh, we discussed the annulus case, and then finally for when A is modular, uh, for a closed surface. The scheme category is trivial. In general, it just um, the result is actually that it just depends on the boundary of the surface. So that corresponds quite nicely with this picture, where the annulus has two boundary components, so it has two copies of A. Uh, this actually leads to a proof that the scheme module for a closed scheme manifold is one-dimensional. So you can you take a take a he gut splitting of the three manifold. So if you have a graph in the three manifold, you know it breaks into a graph in this handle body and this handle body. But uh, because this category, the skin category for the boundary here is closed surface, right? So it's trivial. So essentially that means that it doesn't matter how you glue them up. So in particular, you you split them into you split the graph into this part here and this part here. Um, and then you can change the identification so that this is uh, this gives you S3, and it's easy to see that the scheme module for S3 is one dimensional. Oh, uh, okay. So, oh, yeah. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, for your attention. Um, I really look forward to hearing more questions from you at the synchronize uh, office hour section. Here are some references that I mentioned. Thank you.